Hey there, I'm Anthony Romano and this video is going to tell you why diet soda is going to ruin any fat loss diet you're trying to do. So I talk a lot about keto on this page, it will ruin keto too, <laughs> but the point is any fat loss diet is going to be inhibited by diet soda for a couple key reasons, so I encourage you to stay to the end to know all of them, because I'm going to throw some pretty funky ones in there and some ways to fix this by the end of the video. But the point is, you do not want to be using this and I don't care what anybody else tells you, oh yeah, you have your diet soda while you're you know, doing your diet. No, do not do it. <laughs> so, what is the main problem with diet soda? Well, I'm going to start off with the sweeteners, okay? So, the, the foundation to all of this is the actual ingredients they use because they're designed to be addictive. Now, the ones in particular here are aspartame, and there's also a lot of the things like ACE-K, asulfame potassium. Now, sulfate, potassium, sucralose, those things are not healthy for you in general. I have an entire video on those things. You know, they cause cancer in rats. The sucralose is chemically similar to pesticide. When you heat it up, it's like a very toxic compound called chloropropanols. And basically, you don't want to mess with those for health reasons. Same with aspartame, but aspartame in general is like a modified version of an amino acid. And it's designed to spike certain sensors in your brain that create an addictive response. That's aspartame. Okay, that's the one everybody knows with diet soda, right? So here's the thing, why, it, let's get down to why are these things in here. I'm gonna have to pick my words very carefully and not say any particular brands because a lot of particular brands that make said beverages fund most of the nutritional studies in the world. So I have to be very cautious here. But the point is, if you think about this, these normal versions of sodas are sweetened with sugar, right? Sugar is very addictive. Some of these drinks used to be sweetened with cocaine, right? Why would they make the switch to, to sweeten them with sugar, right? This sounds very conspiracy, rabbit hole, you know, take the, the pills a scenario, right? I'm recruiting you to my cult here. <laughs> but the point is, why would they make a switch to sugar? Well, sugar is more addictive. It's proven to be more addictive, and it also doesn't kill your clientele within several years of consistent usage in some of these beverages, right? That shall remain nameless for my own safety, hopefully. But the point is... Regular sweet, sweet, sweetened sodas are trying to be create a very addictive response. They use the most high glycemic sugars, the most dopamine spiking sugars, high fructose corn syrup, right? So when they have a version that does not have sugar, they have to create equally, if not more, addictive response. So how do you do that? Well, you have to get an ingredient that's artificial that doesn't contain sugar that can still spike the excitatory neurotransmitters in your brain. That is what aspartame is. It's an excitatory neurotoxin. That's literally what it is. So that's the reason why a lot of food companies will use MSG or other ingredients to sweeten foods, right? To create that addictive response without using sugar because they know people are mindful of sugar and they're not going to overdo it. Now, for ketogenic purposes, obviously there's problems there, right? Because you're cutting out sugar. That's the nature of keto. But for any diet you're doing, the main thing you need to know is that aspartame will absolutely make you hunger if you're drinking it. So of course I could throw you the easy solution of just saying, oh, get a naturally sweetened soda alternative, right? You can totally do that. But I'm not here to just give you the basic advice. All right. I'm going to give you some amazing strategies right now. And by the end of this video, that will actually help you fix the brain imbalances that you might be creating from aspartame. And also help you to wean off of, you know, sodas that you might be addicted to in some way, even if you don't think you're addicted, okay? My general rule of thumb for all the clients I work with, for any of my friends, is if you can't go a day without a diet soda, a diet sparkling beverage that is sweetened, basically, then you have a mild to moderate soda addiction, okay? And besides the fact that everybody will tell you, oh yeah, I know the aspartame's worse for you than the, the sugar, Listen, do not switch to regularly sweetened beverages like that. You want to then, at the least, switch to naturally sweetened ones. And from there, yeah, you're good, but you're not going to feel the same. You're not going to feel the same kick out of a non-aspartame sweetened beverage because the whole purpose of putting aspartame into a food, is so, or MSG for that matter, or a drink, is so that no other food or drink tastes as good to you as that one. Okay, it conditions your brain to only get the same excitatory response unless that ingredient is in there. So I've made jokes in other videos that somebody could put MSG and aspartame in a pile of dirt and it would be the best tasting pile of dirt you've ever had, <laughs> okay? Eat a brownie that tastes like literal shit or eat a literal shit that tastes like the best brownie you've ever had in your entire life. i eat the shit. I would, I'm dying. I'd be laughing at you. I'd be eating this shit like, how's that, sh how's that fucking brownie taste, bro? I'd be laughing at you. And you'd be like, 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. I was like, shit tastes. And I'd be like, unreal. What? <laughs> it tastes like everything you were hoping for. So, this again calls into question, why would they put this sweetener in there? Be well, because they need to sustain a business, and when you can't use your most addictive ingredient, because people are diet conscious, you need an alternative. So, let's get into some of these imbalances you might have created. Well, for starters, you are going to be creating an imbalance in excitatory neurotransmitters. So, one way you can replenish this is with a good quality methyl B complex. So, what is a methyl B complex? It's a B complex, so all of the B vitamins, one to 12, not just B12, because people just always say, oh yeah, B12, right? No, you need all of them because they work in synergy. Now your exact dose, I can't tell you, with some of my clients who are quitting diet soda, I will get them to take moderate doses. But you need a B complex, and it needs to be in the methyl forms, okay? Generally, if you see a B vitamin, and you look at the label list, and you don't see the word methyl, M-E-T-H-Y-L, before most of the ingredients, then it's crap, okay? They're gonna be using cheaper forms of these vitamins. The one I've seen most commonly is for B12, they will use cyanocobalamin, which is a very cheap and less effective form of B12, and it taxes your liver a lot because it has to clear out the other half of the B vitamin, which in this case is, is bound to cyanide, okay? It's cyanocobalamin, which is toxic, but for humans, like in a B vitamin, you just have to clear it out with your liver and work harder. So the point is a lot of these B vitamins and a lot of supplements in general skimp out and I'll only ever recommend the high quality stuff, but you need a B complex to restore some of your neurotransmitters. Okay, these are the raw materials to building brain chemicals, basically. Now you also may benefit from an L-tyrosine. This is an amino acid, which is the precursor to excitatory neurotransmitters, the catecholamines. So this is basically, you know, your best way to provide your brain with raw materials for, you know, rebuilding excitatory responses. The dose is gonna be different for every person. I'm just informing you of the fact that this is the way to go. So I can't tell you how to use this properly or the best medical advice on that, but I can tell you that it is the solution and I've used it for individualized doses for certain people. And you have to keep in mind, the way that diet soda is actually gonna ruin a diet is because it's gonna raise your blood sugar because of these ingredients. So because of the aspartame, because of the you know, MSG isn't in diet soda, but because of those types of ingredients, your brain's gonna anticipate sugar and basically create a blood sugar and insulin rise as an anticipatory response. So that's gonna absolutely make you hungrier and make you more inclined to eat more food. So at the very least, even if it doesn't ruin you know, your results, right? I mean, the, granted the spike in insulin can inhibit fat burning, right? And mobilization. But even if it, you know, even if you just have the most willpower in the world, you're a freaking Navy SEAL, all right? Even if you do that, and you can just hit your goals for your diet, everything like that, you're gonna have a harder time. You're gonna be gnawing your arm off at nighttime, which is an expression I say quite often here, because you're causing these hormonal changes, okay? Even if it's a small amount, right? There's nothing wrong with a diet soft drink here and there, there's no problem with that. The whole point of this video is for the people who have the dependence on them, okay? Because I can't tell you how many times I've had clients, friends, people I know, people on YouTube telling me, look, I have an addiction to diet soft drinks. People talk about this, they joke about it all the time and it seems benign, but it is not and it's absolutely holding back your fitness goals. So the last tip to actually grab hold of this, the best one for last, right, is you want to get better control of your blood sugar. Now my favorite way and my preferred way that I've been doing for the past decade is ketogenic dieting where you cut out all sugar, you don't have to be doing low protein, all this BS people tell you, but you cut out all sugar and that's gonna reset your sensitivity to sugar and dramatically improve your insulin sensitivity. That's my favorite way to get a hold of blood sugar, but there are lots of little ways you can incorporate this. So the easiest way for most people is probably intermittent fasting. The next easiest way is to start using bulletproof coffees, which is a keto beverage, but basically it's a fat dense coffee, basically, which can provide you know a good amount of stimulation, just like a diet soft drink would. And from there, it's going to provide a load of high quality fats. You have to know how to do it right, so watch my videos on that. And that's gonna create a better blood sugar stabilization because of the certain fats in Bulletproof Coffee. They're saturated fats and they're very nutrient dense as well if you get the high quality ingredients. So that being said, there are other supplements as well. You could use a chromium, you could use a, a berberine if you're so inclined, but berberine is very powerful and I really only use it with diabetics or anything like that. But many people can benefit from it for sure. It's a very powerful supplement but you want some other ingredient that's going to stabilize blood sugar, okay? Or the easiest way to do that is to just abstain from blood sugar spikes. So 
eat a slightly higher amount of good quality fats in your diet right that's going to slow the release of sugar it's going to keep it more stable okay if your diet is ridiculously high carbohydrate you're going to run into a lot of problems because of that volatility in your blood sugar and insulin which this is just the diet soda thing is just a little spark to that flame it's making it even more volatile and unpredictable well actually it probably will be quite predictable because i'd imagine if you are somebody who's having a diet soft drink every day it's at the same time every day same situation okay so you got to be on that and that that's there for a reason it's become a dependence in that way and you have to rid yourself of the dependence so get naturally sweetened beverages that are soft drinks okay start finding other ways to soothe your sweet tooth and it's going to take some time it is absolutely going to take some time to get rid of this dependence to aspartame and another way you could rebuild some of these neurotransmitters if somebody is super super dependent on these types of things and they're really burning out their brain you may benefit from a dmae supplement which is a cholinergic brain supplement basically it's it's something that's going to help build acetylcholine in your brain and resensitize glutamate sensors so basically glutamate sensors are excitatory and they're the ones that actually get really burnt out from you know aspartame okay and of course the b complex vitamin is going to help a lot with that of course throwing in the other supplements the l tyrosine is going to help with this but if you really need to rebuild dmae might be an option but you might want to look deeper into that so i'm just trying to equip you with all the necessary tools here tools that i've used at some point or another with other people so that is it for this video but also if you are interested in the fasting keto all these other fitness techniques that I talk about, watch my other videos. And if you're interested in keto, go straight to the promised land and get the keto shred program on my website, RomanoKeto.com. Literally the best fat loss tactics that I've built over the past decade. And I also offer coaching, consulting. If you're interested in doing those things as well, you can apply on my website or book a consultation now. And besides that, follow me on Instagram. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, that will make YouTube show my content to more people. That's all you have to do to help me grow my page. So thank you very much. I'm Anthony Romano. Peace.